Hello guys, welcome to another interesting video. Well, this particular video is about the problem reverse a stack. The problem statement is quite simple. It says that you are given a stack ST and you have to reverse the stack using regression. Now guys, one example is given here. We are given this particular stack, right? The stack is following the array representation and when we reverse this particular stack, so this is the output that we will get, right? Now, this is about the problem. Guys, I don't think there is much to explain about this problem. So, now let's jump to the solution directly. Okay, so I have written one example here and see guys, this is the function that we need to complete, right? Now guys, what I'll do is I'll start with the intuition first and after this only I will talk about the approach, right? So starting with the intuition, we are given a stack, right? And the only operations that we can perform in the stack are a push operation or the pop operation. So this is the first thing. The second thing is while writing the solution for this particular problem, we have to keep in mind that the solution is recursive in nature, right? Because this is what the problem asks us to do. Now I have written two condition and we have to keep in mind these two condition while writing the solution, right? So guys, let me start with the first uh, condition which says that we can only perform either push or pop operation. So guys, when we get this particular stack as the input, so we don't have anything to push, right? Because when we say push operation, then uh, we push any value inside the stack, but we don't have any value. This means that we can only perform the pop operation, right? When we get this particular stack as the input. So what I'll do is I'll simply say that, okay, the first step is to blindly perform pop operation in the stack. What happens when we perform pop operation? So let me draw the stack here. I have 3, 2, 1, 7 and 6, right? So I'll simply perform the pop operation. I'll pop this element out. Now I have 6 here, right? Let me store this particular element somewhere in a variable. So let's say I have a variable element, right? And this is going to store this particular uh, value, right? Okay. Now what is the remaining stack? So this is the remaining stack that we have. And if you compare this particular stack with the expected output, so you will find the same set of elements here, but in reverse order, isn't it? So guys, this is something that gives us an idea behind the second step. The second step is to reverse the remaining stack that we have, right? So let me write here, uh, reverse uh, remaining stack. This is the second step. Once we have reversed the remaining stack, so what are the elements that we have? I will have 3, 2, 1 and 7, right? And you can see that uh, this is pretty much uh, matching with our expected output, right? The only difference is we don't have 6 here, but we have 6 here. So guys, we have 6 stored in a variable element, right? So we just need to insert this element at the bottom of this stack. So this is the third step. The third step says that, okay, insert, insert uh, element at bottom, right? Guys, this is how we can solve the problem. Now I hope you have understood the intuition and the idea behind the approach. So let me write these particular things in this function, right? So first step is to pop the element. So I'll write element equals to stack dot pop. What I'm doing is I'm first popping out the element and then I'm storing it somewhere in a variable. After this, I will call the same function reverse for remaining stack, right? So I'll say that, okay, reverse remaining stack and you can now see that uh, okay I don't need to write remaining because automatically the stack will be with the remaining stack right because I'm popping out one element now guys see now you can observe one thing that we have got the recursive function right so the second condition is also true now and the third step is to insert at bottom so I'll say that okay insert at bottom bottom element right and guys this is going to be a function and I'll definitely talk about this particular function how it works but for now you can assume that this is works somehow right so guys this is the this is the set of step that we need to perform in order to get the solution now guys let me show you the dry run so I have the dry run here see this is the initial stack that we have right we call the reverse function and what this uh, function is going to do is it is first going to pop out the element and store it somewhere in a variable right see first pop out the element and store it in variable after this this is the remaining stack so i am going to call the same function for the remaining stack now in this stack you can see that uh, again i am going to pop out the element and store it in variable element right and after this this is the remaining stack i am going to call the function right these are the two steps that i am performing till now because it is going to uh, bring us again in the uh, like starting of the function right again and again and the only difference is we have got the stack smaller now each time when we call the function we have five element then four then three then two then one this is how we are moving now guys there is one more thing to observe is 
when I call a function, then a separate copy of element is created, right? For this particular function, we have element storing 6. For this particular function, we have element storing 7. For this particular function, element is storing 1 like this, right? Now, guys, see, I will kill, I'll keep calling the function, right? Till I get an empty stack. And the question is, what to do when you have an empty stack? In an empty stack, we don't have any element, so we can't perform pop operation because this is something which is stack uh, underflow, right? So, I have to handle this condition uh, somehow. So, what I'll do is, I'll simply write, if my stack is empty if my stack is empty then i can simply return without doing anything right and guys this is going to act as the base condition for this recursive function right now guys this is the whole approach that we need to follow and now let me complete this right run. what will happen is when i get an empty stack so i'm simply going to return right and when i return then you can see that i have three and how i return I was calling at this point, right? So when I return, I'll simply come to the next statement, which is this one, right? So it says that insert at bottom element. So I have element storing three. So I'll simply insert at bottom and uh, inserting at bottom for this stack simply means that insert, right? Because it is automatically will be considered at the bottom of the stack. After this, I will come here and you can see that guys, now I have two, right? I have to insert two at the bottom. So I'll simply insert at the bottom. Now the new state will be, uh, instead of this 3 I will have 3 2 right and you can see that guys now the stack is changed so I have to change it everywhere so here now I will have a uh, like 3 2 right and after this I have element storing 1 so I have to uh, like insert this one at the bottom of this stack so I'll simply write one here and you can see that now this particular stack is also reversed so it is going to return right and now we don't have this particular order uh, we have order uh, like 3, 2, 1, right? And this element is storing 7, so I have to uh, insert this 7 at the bottom of this stack. So I will have 7 here when I insert, right? And now this is the new order that we have. So I have to change it here as well. Guys, call by reference basically says that when you change the value present in an array or an stack somewhere, so it is going to change for every function call, right? So now here, the value is also going to change now the order of element here will be 3 2 1 7 right and after this i have 6 as the element right i have to insert it at the bottom so when i insert this particular element at the bottom i will have 6 here and you can see that this is the expected output right guys right so now i hope you have understood how we are going to solve this problem the only thing that we are left with is how this insert at bottom function actually works right because i am simply inserting at bottom but there should be a code behind this which is working to insert the element at the bottom right so guys now let me explain insert at bottom function okay so i have written the function title here and this is the function that we need to complete right first of all let me write an example so that i can explain what actually we are going to do so let's say i have a stack which contains element 2 3 and 4 right and i have value equals to 1 that i want to insert at the bottom of the stack so how i can do this what I can do is I can recursively remove every element from the stack and after this uh, I can insert one here right uh, so I will be able to insert one at the bottom let me explain how guys so first of all I have this stack 2 3 and 4 right so I'm simply going to remove the top element I will have 2 here right and 2 is now removed so I will again call the function I will have 3 4 and now again 3 is going to be removed right and I have to store them somewhere so let's say I have a variable element which is going to store the uh, like element that I'm popping out right and again the same thing guys a separate copy of element variable is created whenever we call a function right so again I'm going to call the function I have a single element right 4 so I'm simply going to pop out this element as well so I will have element equals to 4 and now 4 is no more there how it actually looks like when we Im try to implement this so first of all I'm popping out the value right I'll simply write element equal to okay let me remove this guys I'm going to use red color for this so I'll simply write a uh, element equals to stack dot pop right i hope you understand this after this again i have to call the same function right so i'll simply call the same function which is uh insert at last uh and stack i have stack and i have value right so i'm again calling the same function and these two line are going to be executed again and again and at last i will get an empty stack right and the moment i get an empty stack so i have an empty stack right i can simply insert my element that i want to insert so i'll say that okay if my stack is empty if stack is empty empty i can simply insert value right so i'll say that okay 
add value and after this return these are the two step that we need to perform when we get an empty stack so i will have now one present in this stack and now i am going to return right so after this i will have one here as well because uh, see we are using a stack right and whenever we do any change at any time in the function call then that change reflect in every function call right so now i will have one here as well so after this i just need to add this four right so i will have four one here so i'll say that okay stack dot add uh, element right so i will have four added here after this i'm simply going to return again so now i have four and one in the stack right again the same thing guys the changes are going to be reflected in every function call so once i have one and four i can simply insert this three so i will have three here after this i will come here then you can see that i have three four and one right so i can simply add this two and now you can see that one is inserted at the bottom of the stack so guys these are the steps that we are going to perform in order to insert any element at the bottom of the stack right so guys i hope you understand this now one last thing is left uh, which is the time complexity of this approach right so see guys what we are doing is uh, let me go to uh, the again the same code right so this is the code right and for this code you can see one thing that uh, we are first uh, like removing one element after this we are calling the reverse function right so let's say there are n elements which are present in the stack let's say there are n elements in the stack right so we are removing one element after this i'm calling the same function for n minus one element right and here what i'm doing is i'm simply performing again an o of n operation isn't it because this is a recursive call right and this function again takes o of n time to insert the element let's say this is the function so you can see that i'm removing every element so this is going to take o of n time so let me write the recursive relation for this the recursive relation is uh like t of n equals to t of n minus 1 plus n right this is what the recursive relation looks like and plus c is also plus o of 1 is also there but i am not considering this because o of 1 is actually because of this but it is not going to contribute to time complexity right that's why i am writing t of n minus 1 plus n and if you try to solve this guys then the complexity will be o of n square this is about the time complexity what about the space complexity so if you consider the recursion stack space then the space complexity is o of n square and if you don't consider it then explicit space complexity is o of 1 right this is all about the intuition and approach guys now let me show you the code so i have the code here you can see that on the left hand side i have the c plus plus code and on the right hand side i have the java code guys right and you can see that the code looks very similar to the approach that i have explained you this is the insert at last, fun last function right and this is the reverse function after this we have the python code as well right and in python guys you need to uh, handle the recursion uh, limit as well right uh, if you guys are aware of how python works so this is all about this video guys thank you